Coming up, baseball is back. We recap 2023's opening day. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts join us to go over the biggest stories in baseball and recap all of the action for you from yesterday. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Opening day feels like the unofficial start of spring. One game down for the Yankees, one home run for Aaron Judge. Locked On Yankees and Locked On Giants break down everything from the Bronx. This is Stacey Gasulius of Locked On Yankees, and the Yankees win their home opener 5 nothing against the Giants. The big story of the day, Anthony Volpe making his debut. And how did he do? Well, he got a walk in his first at bat. He also stole a base. He was perfect in the field. All around good day for him. And Aaron Judge facing the team that everyone thought he had signed with for seven minutes in December. Hits a home run in his first at bat. Dead center. 422. So if you bet on Aaron Judge to hit the first Yankees home run of the season, congratulations. You won something. I don't know what. Gleyber Torres also hit a home run. DJ LeMahieu drove in a run. And Garrett Cole, who started the game with a four-pitch walk, ended up striking out 11. So he recovered from that. It's cold today. It's cold. And that's the only complaint that Yankee fans are allowed to have about today, that it was cold. Other than that, everything worked out almost perfectly. So we'll have everything you need to know about this game on the next Locked on Yankees. So tune in. The Giants struck out 16 times on opening day. Garrett Cole just completely overmatched them, overpowered them at the plate. But thankfully, one game of a baseball season, no matter how it goes, is not going to define you. This is Ben Kaspik with the Locked on Giants podcast. If this game were to define the Giants, are you telling me they're going to hit 133 with a 212 on base and a 133 slugging for the rest of the season? Of course not. Oh, and have a strikeout rate around 50%. The Giants struck out 16 times. Guess what? though on the pitching side they struck out 16 Yankees the big difference being the Yankees hit a couple of home runs and Logan Webb at the end of the year probably going to be one of the best in the league at preventing homers Garrett Cole a little bit homer prone and he didn't give up any so so it goes in Major League Baseball the Giants made also some surprising roster moves before uh, the game got underway so just all in all a dud of an opening opening day for the Giants, but that's baseball. It's one of 162. You turn the page and get ready for game number two on Saturday. It's a new year, but more of the same for the Angels. An amazing outing from Shohei Otani, but an opening day loss to the Athletics. Locked on Angels goes over some familiar issues. Shohei Otani pitches a heck of a game and the Angels still lose. Does that sound familiar? Hey everybody, it's Mike Frisch, one half of Locked On Angels. And the Angels opened up on Thursday night in Oakland and it was a great pitching matchup. Kyle Mueller against Shohei Otani and we assumed it would be our game because Shohei looked fantastic. He went six innings, he gave up two hits, he walked three, he struck out ten. He was the first Angel opening day starter to strike out ten players plus batters since Jared Weaver in 2012. And the Angels led this game 1-0, and then they blew it. The bullpen blew it. And that's been the narrative for the last few years. This time it was Aaron Loop and Ryan Tapera, two guys we paid a lot of money to who just can't get it together. And the Angels had no offense in this game outside of their rookie stud, Logan Ohapi, who's their catcher. He had an RBI single. But they lose this game 2-1. to one. Now, I know that there's 161 games left, so I'm not going to get too frustrated. But I am a bit nervous because this bullpen looks shaky. It feels like this team's going to be different this year. But Thursday night's game felt like same story, different year. And we're going to talk all about it on Locked on Angels. And so join my brother John and I. We'd love to see you there. The defending champs unveiled their banner, but... They fall to the White Sox on opening day in the first game of their season. Locked on White Sox and Locked on Astros go over the details. Hey, they're Ray Wheelhouse here with Locked on Astros. And the Houston Astros fall to the White Sox 3-2. Dylan Cease with a double-digit strikeout game. The White Sox pitcher looked phenomenal on the mound. Frember Valdez gave up 11 hits, but all the runs came late. The Astros scored first with a run on a pass ball. Alvarez scored. Then uh, Andrew Vaughn hit a ball where they scored two runs in that inning, and they ended up going up 3-1. to one. Jordan Alvarez would try to bring them back. They were down 3-1, to one, hit a ball to right field, a bomb. 
absolutely crushed it. They came within one run. Then you had the rookie, Yadar Diaz, DH, trying to not only tie the game, but win the game because Kyle Tucker got on base with the walk and he struck out. Tough loss for the Astros, but they come back to fight another day. And again, this is H.T. Wellhouse with Locked On Astros. Remember, we are your team every day. What a game for the Chicago White Sox. They take down the defending champs, Houston Astros, 3-2. to two. Hey, I'm Nick Morawski for Locked on White Sox. Dylan Cease in his first opening day start of his career. Absolutely brilliant. Ten strikeouts. Uh, Andrew Vaughn coming up clutch with a two RBI double late in the game. And Ronaldo Lopez has never recorded a save, comes in pumping 100 miles per hour uh, and locks it down for Pedro Grafol's first win as a big league manager. Outstanding stuff from the Southsiders. For more White Sox coverage, check out Locked on White Sox. Offense not an issue between the Red Sox and Orioles. Baltimore ekes out a one-run win in the end. Hosts from both teams join us to tell us how it went down at Fenway Park. Red Sox baseball is back. Not exactly how we wanted it to go. Hoover ended up getting pulled early. Bullpen ended up coming in early. How'd you feel about the game, boys? Not their best work. Uh, bullpen was a little shaky, and some of the guys that were in question all over the course of spring training didn't show up. Uh, not the best performance overall. What do you think, Chris? Too many double plays. The Sox in into way too many double plays today. Uh, bullpen, like Steve said, the bullpen wasn't great. Um, it's cold, too. Very chilly. Yoshida got his first hit. Doogie started off leading off with a triple with the pitching. The biggest thing that we talked about all throughout the offseason, the pitching was going to be the biggest Achilles heel. It seemed to ring true early on. We'll see how the rest of the season ends up going. Now, how's that for an opening day win for the Orioles? 10-9 over the Red Sox as the Birds start the season 1-0. and Listen, the offense was incredible. Adley Rutschman, 5-for-5, five five, six times reaching base. Get the MVP votes in. Get the MVP bets in now for Adley Rutschman. On the pitching side, some things to be worked out. Kyle Gibson was okay. Sino Perez was good. The rest of the bullpen was pretty shaky. And that ninth inning, ee. But the O's win the game because the offense powers them there. And it's a 10-9 win over Boston. I'll have the episode recapping it all up later tonight on the Locked On Orioles podcast. There's always a lot of hope on opening day. Cubs fans have every reason to be hopeful this year. A 4 nothing shutout win over the Brewers to kick off the year. Locked On Cubs goes over all of the highlights. Just an absolute clinic from the Chicago Cubs on opening day. They beat Milwaukee and Corbin Burns for the second straight opening day. Today's final 4 nothing. Really, the difference in the game was the third inning. The Brewers had a chance, had bases loaded, one out, couldn't score, and the Cubs scored all four runs in the bottom half of that inning. Marcus Stroman was absolutely terrific today. The type of start when you when you sign a guy and, and you want to give him big games, that's the type of start you expect. He was tremendous. Dansby Swanson, who had a really rough spring up until the last couple of games, was the best position player on the field today. Hit the ball hard every at bat and played great defense. Uh, just just a, a perfect way to start the season. This is what this Cubs team is supposed to do. Play defense, prevent runs, find a way to get some timely hitting. On Saturday, they will uh, face Brandon Woodruff. Sunday, they'll face Eric Lauer. It'll be some combination of Justin Steele and Jamison Tyone for the Cubs. Great start to the season. Let's keep it going. Coming up, the Mets looking good in Game 1. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by FanDuel. It's the number one sports book in America. The Final Four is this weekend, so it's a pretty good time to sign up if you haven't already. New customers get that no sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, super easy for you to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes that will be drained. Plus, FanDuel also lets you combine your bets for that chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to go to your no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to fanduel.com slash locked on, that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel. 
Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you again for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. The Mets handled business against Cy Young winner Sandy Alcantara and looked pretty good doing it. Locked On Mets is in to go over the first win of the year. That looked a lot like the 101 win Mets team from last year. What do you think, Dad? Ah, uh, it's great. I'm, I can't wait for this season. It's going to be a big one. That's right. So that was a great opening day. We had a blast. Max Scherzer looked good early. The Mets bats looked good early. They knocked out Sandy Alcantara. They scored three runs off him. But Scherzer did give up three. Garrett Cooper killed the Mets today defensively. Hit a two-run homer to tie it, but the Mets came back. They scored a couple, and the bullpen held up. No Edwin Diaz. They found an answer to get seven, eighth, ninth inning. Drew Smith to Brooks Raley to David Robertson. Nice day for Mets baseball. They always win an opening day, but it felt good to be on the ballpark. We'll be back at it tomorrow night. One more for us. Can't wait. That's right. So uh, make sure you check out Locked On Mets. I'll have a full breakdown of everything we just watched. And uh, have a great weekend watching this Mets team hopefully beat up on these fish one game of this season in the books but detroit has yet to score a run this season locked on tigers goes over the loss to tampa well that is certainly one way to take all of the wind out of the sail of opening day i am scott bentley the host of locked on tigers and the detroit tigers drop opening day by a score of four to nothing at the hands of the tampa bay rays uh down in tampa look I didn't think the pitching was that bad. We can start there. Like the, the Erod gave a very on-brand Erod performance, right? Like I thought he looked solid, especially before his last inning of work there. I thought he was great. Uh, the bullpen, while shaky at times, like didn't look awful. I don't think this wasn't a, an implosion pitching wise. This was just a. <laughs> it, it sucks because we got shut out at a historic rate last year. And now to start off this season, here's another shutout. But it is Shane McClanahan. It's a great raise bullpen. We're going to see what the next 161 games have in store before we jump to any conclusions after game one. Not going to do the sky's falling thing, but very frustrating, at least. All right. We're going to talk about the rest tomorrow on Locked on Tigers. DeGrom got knocked out early in Texas as the Rangers got a win to start their year. Locked on Phillies disappointed. Locked on Rangers says it's the little things. Well, that is an opening day loss for your Philadelphia Phillies. Connor Thomas, your host of Locked On Phillies, currently on the side of I-95 North right now on my way home from a watch party. And honestly, I'm going to be positive. It's not often that the Phillies have a nine-run inning given up, and I'm going to be positive. But it's opening day. It's a long season. They did some really good things. This offense is going to be special. Alec Bohm had a great day. Brandon Marsh's swing looks better. Nick Castellanos had a nice at-bat in his first at-bat. I mean... This team is going to be special. They have the pieces. It was a rough fourth inning for Aaron Nola. The bullpen didn't look great. They're going to work it out, okay? And they've got pitchers with a lot of wear and tear on them from the long run last season. This team showed you a glimpse today of how special they can be. They have to put the pieces together. The Rangers are not a bad team, and uh, we move on. It's 1-162. Everything's going to be all right. Take a deep breath, Phillies Nation. We're all good. Subscribe to Locked On Phillies and check out our next episode for more. For the first time since August 15th of 2020, your Texas Rangers are above 500. I'm Bryce Paddock, host of the Locked On Rangers podcast. The Texas Rangers win their home opener, their season opener, 11-7 to against the Philadelphia Phillies, the reigning NL champs. In Jacob deGrom's first start, we had a bit of everything. We had 101 miles an hour painting the outside corner for a strikeout in a perfect first inning. Then things getting off the rails with some soft contact, some hard contact, some weird defense, a lot of strikeouts, a lot of weird things happening. Team getting no hit through four innings and then dropping nine runs in, excuse me, no hit through three innings. And the fourth inning was where the nine runs came in. And this Texas Rangers team just did not look back. Good enough pitching from the bullpen. A couple of innings from Brock Burke and Jonathan Hernandez. Really, really important there. The Rangers offense, of course, coming from, as we all know, Robbie Grossman and Brad Miller like we all expected it in this game just a little bit of everything a whole lot of chaos and a whole lot of fun for the season opener the Bruce Bochy era is here and man it is fun since he goes to the bullpen early against the Pirates to no avail Pittsburgh getting the win in game one locked on hosts from both teams join us with more post game the Pittsburgh Pirates are 1-0 in the season of 2023 as they defeat 
the Cincinnati Reds 5-4 to four at Great American Ballpark in front of a record crowd at Great American Ballpark thanks to the likes of G1 Bay, who was a on-base machine and a stolen base machine today. Andrew McCutcheon records three walks and a base hit in his return to the Pittsburgh Pirates, and O'Neill Cruz hits a 111.1 mile-per-hour fastball into the wind of Great American Ballpark for his first home run of the season. He also gets the sacrifice fly that scores G1 Bay. Picks up the save to begin the 2023 campaign. The Pittsburgh Pirates are victorious in their first victory. My name is Ethan Smith of the Locked On Pirates podcast. I will see you on the flip side. Well, that's not exactly the way we wanted opening day to go. What's up? This is Jeff and Steve from Lockdown Reds. And um, opening day loss. Can't believe that we're standing here. We're going to have to wear freaking yellow, aren't we? We're going to have to wear yellow. Shout out to Ethan. Hey, listen, we learned some things today, though. We learned that this is the year of the steer. It is here. And we've also learned that David Bell cannot have an itchy trigger finger. We cannot be going to the bullpen in the fourth inning. That is way too early. I, I I understand protecting arms and all of that stuff, but two times through the order, they've got to throw at least one more time, maybe even two more times. This bullpen is not good enough to pitch that long. Make sure you tuned in to Locked on Reds. Make sure you have subscribed. We're going to break down this game and preview the rest of the series in your podcasting feeds tomorrow. But hey, guess what? There's 161 more of these. Certainly no pitchers duel in St. Louis as Toronto wins 10-9 to yesterday. Locked on Cardinals has more on that loss and also some injury updates. Cardinals dropped the season opener today to the Toronto Bloop Jays by the score of 10-9. to I say that because they rarely hit the ball all that hard today. But yeah, they kept finding holes. They kept dinking and dunking, and that's how they ended up winning this game. Uh, the Cardinals... Got behind early, three to nothing, able to fight back, take the lead multiple times, and end up giving away the lead multiple times. The big news is the injury to Wilson Contreras. Uh, took that uh, pitch from Jordan Hicks almost 103 miles per hour off his kneecap. Had to leave the game. X rays after the game, according to manager Ali Marmel, negative, which is good news, but they still have to uh, get an MRI done. So keep your fingers crossed, Cardinal Nation. Uh, also, the reason Jordan Hicks was in the game instead of Giovanni Gallegos late was the fact that Giovanni Gallegos had tweaked his back yesterday. We found that out after the game, and hence he was not available today. So tough loss, but got 161 more of these things to go. Get back to it on Saturday at Bush Stadium. Some good pitching performances from Kansas yesterday, but no offense to back it up. Locked on Royals goes over game one of 162. The Kansas City Royals got their season underway. The good news is baseball is back, and the Royals pitching staff only gave up two runs in this game. The bad news is this vaunted lineup that we thought was going to be so special did not start out that way on opening day. There's still a long ways to go. Bats are typically slow. Can they rebound on Saturday? What do they need to do to get better offensively? But ultimately, the positive sign is that this pitching staff was competitive in this game against Minnesota, but the Royals do fall 2 to nothing and only collect two hits offensively. We'll talk more about it on Lockdown Royals. The bats came through for the Dodgers as they took down the Diamondbacks to start the year. Lockdown hosts from both teams go over everything that happened in L.A. Opening day is in the books, one down, 161 to go, and it was a good one. What's up? It's Jeff from Locked On Dodgers. Dodgers beat the Diamondbacks 8-2. to two. The game started a little bit scary. Julio Urias uh, allowed two runs in the first three innings. Didn't have his best stuff, it seemed like. And then he buckled down, ended up going six innings, allowed just the two runs, and the Dodgers offense turned it on after going down 2 to nothing. They scored eight unanswered runs to win eight to two. Big game for Will Smith, drove in four runs. Big game from James Outman, two hits, including a two-run homer. Uh, first home run of the season for the Dodgers goes to Outman. First run scored of the season goes to Outman. Uh, first three RBIs go to Will Smith. And uh, first win goes to Julio. Great game for him. Uh, great game for the bullpen. All in all, other than Max Muncy striking out five times and Mookie Betts striking out three times, uh, other than that, it was a great team win. A lot of fun, and can't wait to do this 161 more times. It's opening day. It's a new season, but yet the D-backs are still losing to the L.A. Dodgers. Miller Thomas of Locked on Dimebacks here. The D-backs fell to the Dodgers in game one of the season, 8-2, to two, and it just wasn't pretty all around because Zach Gallen was on the bump for the first time during his D-backs tenure. He started opening day, and this is someone that led 
last season in whip, but you wouldn't have known by today's start because, look, he still had to put away pitches. He still racked up seven strikeouts, but the Dodgers were just working the pitch counts. They were able to get him out of the fifth inning. Zach Allen had three walks allowed, five earned runs. Like, it just wasn't your typical Zach Allen start. The offense looked good the first couple innings, and then just went quiet after that. Only was able to muster up four hits on the night. No walks drawn, so the offense didn't do much. Zach Allen wasn't able to be his normal Zach Allen self, and the bullpen wasn't able to stop the bleeding either. Dodgers take game one. Seattle got more than they could have hoped for out of their pitching staff to start the year as they hold Cleveland scoreless in the season opener. Locked on Mariners and Locked on Guardians have that recap. So yeah, I'd say Ty France is pretty healthy right now and that Luis Castillo's velocity concerns in the spring, (laughs) bit overblown. This is Tidy Gonzalez, host of the Locked on Mariners podcast here. France, the star of the game for the Mariners, goes three for four with a game-winning three-run home run in the bottom of the eighth to give the Mariners a 3 nothing opening day victory over the Cleveland Guardians. Some real nice pop out of France tonight and really all of his at-bats, including the second-to-last at-bat that he had where he nearly missed a go-ahead home run by about a foot. Ended up having to settle for a double, was not driven in. Kind of the theme of the night for the Mariners before France's three-run home run. They had some opportunities against Shane Bieber, just could not drive any runs in, could not collect any hits with runners in scoring position. I believe France's home run was the only hit they had with runners in scoring position. But it didn't matter because the Mariners' pitching staff tonight was immaculate. Luis Castillo, as I mentioned, was consistently 95 to 97. We even saw 98 at some time. So... Those concerns about his velocity in the spring, overblown. Don't matter. The velocity is there. There's nothing to worry about with Luis Castillo. He was fantastic tonight. Six innings of work, six strikeouts, just one hit allowed. And then the Mariners' bullpen, of course, picks up right where they left off. Matt Brash with some disgusting sliders, as one would expect at this point. But, man, what a marvel it is to watch him throw some of those frisbees like he did to Jose Ramirez, making Ramirez just fall flat on his rear end. Paul Seawald with a nice inning in the eighth. Andres Munoz a little shaky in the ninth after getting a couple quick outs there, but he ends up closing the door. No damage done. And the Mariners are 1-0. and We're going to be talking about this game and previewing the rest of the series for this weekend on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Check it out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you then. Peace. Cleveland Guardians drop what is likely Shane Bieber's last opening day start for this franchise. Currently tied for the third most opening day starts with number four today. He was brilliant. You know, he pitched six innings, didn't allow a run. You can't ask for more. Guardians managed just four hits in this one, two in the ninth to at least make it interesting. Ahmed Rosario with a single followed up with a Jose double with two outs, but they could not get a run across against a very talented, very good Seattle pitching staff. Uh, Of course, the story of this probably comes down to the eighth inning. Uh, Number 99 came in and just did not have it today. Had the first pitch clock violation, which I think all of us kind of expected. Uh, Had issues with command in this one and then gave up a three-run home run to Ty France. I think Seattle's second best hitter. Uh, You can debate if he was left in too long. You can debate the foul tip. I think it was a foul tip personally. But at the end of the day, they lost 4-0 or 3-0 in this one. And it's an opening day bummer for the Cleveland Guardians. That'll do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On MLB and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.